well, we give you a welcome again to our little times of preaching the gospel during this week. We are from Bethesda Gospel Hall in Park Road, Harleypum, TS269HU. We can be found on Facebook and Bethesda Gospel Hall, Harleypum, Twitter, Bethesda Hall, and on YouTube too. These studies are, are put on, this preaching is put on there too. Bethesda Gospel Hall, Harleypum. We've come again to declare the gospel, the good news. We are living in difficult days. We hear of sad stories all the time. I heard today of a man who I've known from his youth, and he's seriously ill with the coronavirus. We know that there are many of us who know many different people who are in isolation, or they have the virus, or sadly, some have died from the virus. And we don't make seek to make glib of that. Death is serious. The Bible tells us that life is short. Death is sure. Sin the cause. Christ the cure. And we know that many are sorrowing and suffering. So we bring this message to you in a compassionate way because we want to tell you that there is salvation for every one of us. For you see, we might all face death at one time in our life. We face that situation of death, but it is beyond that that we really need to speak of today. Eternal separation from God or eternal life to be saved or to be lost. These are the questions that we need to answer. Are we saved? Are we secure that even though we die, we know that we have eternal life. We know we have all the blessing of entering into because we have repented and put our faith in Christ. You see, there's an old hymn that says, working will not save me, weeping will not save me, trying will not save me, but faith in Christ will save me. That's what we want to declare tonight. So we're going to have a word of prayer and then we're going to read from the scriptures. Father, we just ask again for a real sense of thy presence in this short time that we would be around thy word. Help us, we pray, to be clear, to be precise. May the Holy Spirit take control of all that is being said and done. May the Lord Jesus be honoured and glorified. May precious souls be saved. As they hear the gospel, we pray, may Christians who have already put their faith in Christ and know him as their Saviour and Lord, we pray that they might be encouraged too when they hear the glad tidings, that message of a wonderful Saviour, the only Saviour of sinners. We commit ourselves to thee in the Saviour's precious name. Amen. Well, Tonight, I want to take up a word, a word that we read in the Bible. And this word is whosoever. We have quoted it many times, but I wonder, do we really understand it? You might say, well, we wouldn't really say whosoever today, but we might say whoever, whoever it is whether it's this person or that person, whoever is listening, whoever is responding. And the Bible speaks about the whosoever, the whoever. And we read of it many times in the scriptures. And so we're going to read verses tonight that speak of the whosoever. And we should be able to follow these verses. So first of all, I want to read in James, the epistle of James at the back of the New Testament and chapter 2 and verse, well, well, we'll start to read from verse 8. If you fulfil the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye count sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law 
and yet offends in one point, he is guilty of all. So we find there the whosoever of guilt, the whosoever of guilt. You see, the Bible says that even though we might keep the law, and that's speaking, of course, of the law of Moses, keep the commandments. Many people say, I keep the commandments. I keep that special one, do unto others what you would have them do to you. I try and keep the law of Moses. I try to succeed in these things, but it's so hard. And yet the scripture says to us, we've just read it, that if we keep the law and we are found in just one point, we are guilty of all. We are found guilty before God. You see, really, we cannot keep the law. There is none of us that can be honest and say that we have not broken God's law. God declares that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We cannot make God a liar, for God is truth, and he tells us things as they are. So we are guilty, the whosoever of guilt. We have fallen short of God's standard, and we have that guilt. We have that guilt. And of course, when someone has committed something that is wrong, they need forgiveness. They need forgiveness. And that's what we want to tell you tonight. For those who repent, for those who admit that they are guilty before God, they have fallen short of God's standard. They cannot save themselves. Then God is ready to forgive because Christ died for our sins. That was the message that Paul told those Corinthian believers. That's what he taught them from the beginning. Christ died for our sins, that he was buried, and he rose that third day, all in accordance with the scriptures. What a wonderful message that is. The whosoever of guilt we read, we are guilty. And we need to admit that tonight. And yet many people admit it, but they want to find their own solution. They say, well, if I do this and I do that, you see, the keeping of the law, if I try and do good and I try and do good and I do this and I do that and I do the other and I keep on doing, then maybe God will just be satisfied with what I have done. The Bible says he is not satisfied. Our good works will not save us. But we need God's forgiveness because we are guilty. How can we get God's forgiveness? How can we gain that? Well, we want to read in Acts chapter 10. And in Acts chapter 10 and verse 43, we read these words. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive the remission of sins. They shall receive forgiveness. You see, it's as I've just said earlier, it is that we need forgiveness of our sins. You might know of the story of the man in Capernaum. And how the Lord Jesus was in a house and many people were gathered there. And this man was paralyzed. He had no feeling. He had nothing. And he was really on his own. But his friends came to see him. They told him the news that the Lord Jesus was in the house. And they had faith to believe if they took him there. That man could be knowing that healing that he needed. But there was something more important of the healing that they hadn't really thought about. And so they bring their friend and they carried him along. And there was crowds there. You see, sometimes people get in the way. Maybe there's something keeping you back from Christ. Maybe there's something, maybe it's the pleasures of this world. Well, the pleasures of this world in the main have all been cancelled, haven't they? You see, they don't last. They don't satisfy. In the end, we are now finding that we have to do without them. But you know, they brought their friend and they couldn't get in through the door. 
So they took him up on the roof and they lowered their friend down into the room where the Lord Jesus was. And you know what the Lord Jesus said to that man? He didn't say, do you want to be healed? He said to him, son, thy sins are forgiven thee. What a wonderful thing. There was something more important than his healing, his physical healing. There was that spiritual problem. Thy sins are forgiven thee. The religious people of the day, they heard these things. They didn't speak outright, but in their hearts they were saying, who is this man? How dare he say such things? He's a blasphemer. How can he dare forgive sins? Only God can forgive sins. You know, they were right. But what they didn't realize that the one before them was God manifest in flesh. That one who came and was born at Bethlehem so long ago, he was God in human flesh, truly God and truly man. And he could say, Son, thy sins are forgiven thee. And so when he'd spoken to the questions arising in the hearts of these people, he said to him, Son, arise, take up thy bed and walk. You see, we faced with some very difficult decisions, haven't we? And we know people who are suffering through this virus. We know people who have died through this virus. I know people. You will know people too. And we are very saddened. But there is another matter. It's not just about death. But what happens after death? Oh, many people tell us, well, when you're dead, you're dead. But the Bible tells us it's appointed unto man wants to die. But after this, the judgment. You see, the soul goes on to live forever. And that soul will either be with Christ or that soul will be eventually in the lake of fire, separated from God eternally under his punishment. And yet you say to me, but hasn't Christ died? Is not that the reason? Yes, he died. He was buried and he rose again. But as you know, many people refuse to put their faith in him. Many people refuse to accept what he has done. It's very similar really to the people of the day. They said, when the Lord was here, we don't want him. We have no king but Caesar. Crucify him, they cried. They refused him. How sad to refuse the Lord Jesus. Oh, there was a lady in John 4, a woman of Samaria, and she met the Lord Jesus at the well, and having spoken to her, she realized that he was the Messiah. He told her he was. And she left her water pot, and she went roaming, telling everybody, come see a man who told me all things ever I did. Is not this the Christ? You see, she was so eager. She ran, she left her water pot, and she told everybody he would listen. Dear friend, that's why we're here tonight. Because we want to tell you, whoever you are, that you need a saviour. And there is but one saviour. And that saviour is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he has completed that work that the Father gave him to do. All has been done that you might repent and believe. Christ gave himself upon the cross of Calvary. His precious blood was shed. The work that he came to do is done. It's completed. It is finished. We usually sing a chorus with the children. And the second verse goes, done, done, D-O-N-E. Done, done, done perfectly. Finished, Christ cried, when on Calvary he died. So it's done, done, done. Your doing will never be enough. If we keep the law and offend in one point, we are guilty. We need to admit our guilt. We need to realise that we are a guilty sinner who only deserves the judgment of God. The wages of sin is death, eternal separation from God. But God in his mercy, he offers salvation through that blessed one. Because we have read here, that whosoever believeth in him shall receive the remission of sins. That's forgiveness, dear friend. Forgiveness. 
or to be forgiven. What a wonderful thing to know God's forgiveness. That man would have gone out rejoicing, forgiven, forgiven. So the whosoever of forgiveness. But then I want to speak of the whosoever of eternal life. And if you've been listening or viewing these things, you probably know what verse I'm going to read before I read it. It's found in John chapter 3 and verse 16. Some people have called it the gospel in a nutshell. 25 words in the Bible, in the King James authorised version of the Bible, is 25 words. 12 about God and 12 about me or you and me. And the very centre verse, because 12 and 12 make 24, is the word son. You see, he is the centre of the gospel. He is the centre of our preaching tonight. He is the central figure that you need to look to for salvation. It's not to ourselves and what we can do because we can do nothing about salvation. It's what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. I'll read those lovely words again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, you, me, anyone, everyone, that believeth in him, that puts their faith in Christ, puts their faith in what the Lord Jesus has done, accepting what he has done at Calvary, is enough for you to be saved, for your salvation, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish should not face the judgment of God. For God's desire is that you would be saved, but have everlasting life. You see, that's what God wants to give, the whosoever of eternal life, to know that you're saved, to know that you have eternal life. John chapter 3, in the very last verse, verse 36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. It's a possession, a present possession. But he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. You see, the Bible tells us that God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And in John 3, 18, it says, He that believeth on him is not condemned. You see, because they put their faith in Christ, they're forgiven. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but notice, but he or she that believeth not is condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You see, men and women and boys and girls, they're on that downward road, that road that leads to judgment. That's where we're heading. We need to turn around. We need to repent. We need to see the guiltiness of our sin. And we need to say, I'm not carrying on this way anymore. I'm turning to Christ for salvation. I'm repenting. It doesn't just mean to say sorry. You know, many people don't, they? they say sorry. And sometimes they don't mean it. And you know that. Well, that's not what the Bible talks about. That's not repentance. No, it's a change of direction. It's something that's evident in that person's life. You see, my grandchildren, they do things and they say to me, sorry, Grandad. And you know, sometimes the parent has said, say sorry to Grandad. And they say, sorry, Grandad. But in their little childlike way, they don't really understand what they're saying. Sometimes they, they're not really sorry in a deep way. And other times there might be that that takes place and you see the tears and you see the emotion in their hearts. And even then that can be, you know, something that's not quite right. You see, we're not talking about emotionalism tonight. But you know, when you see genuine repentance, there's a change of direction. As we've said before, it's maybe not the best term, but it's a term that men and women might understand today. Making that new turn, saying I'm not carrying on on this downward road anymore. I'm looking in mercy to Christ. I'm crying for forgiveness for my sins. I'm guilty, wretched. I'm guilty, wretched. And I am facing the judgment of God. 
I am a guilty sinner, but Jesus died for me. That's what it is, the affair. Turning from our sin and turning to Christ. Oh yes, the whosoever of eternal life. And then I want to read from Revelation in chapter 20. And here we read the whosoever of condemnation. And I'll read from verse 12 so we can understand the verses here. It's the last verse, verse 15, that I want to take up. John 20. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell, Hades, delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You see, everybody who appears at this judgment here, it is for those who have rejected Christ. They've maybe heard the gospel as you were hearing it. They've maybe prayed. They've maybe given of their substance to help others. They've maybe done many good things. They've maybe attended church. They've maybe taken Holy Communion. They've maybe been baptised. But they've never repented and believed the gospel. You see, their names are not written in the book of life. It's not recorded that they are saved. And so we read, whosoever, yes, whosoever was not written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire, eternal judgment. Without Christ, without hope, forever. Oh dear friend, that's a solemn thing, isn't it? The whosoever of condemnation. And yet we've been telling you of the whosoever of eternal life. That whosoever believeth in him, on him, should not perish. God doesn't want that. But have eternal life, everlasting life. That's why he sent his son. His son came, the Lord Jesus came. You imagine the very creator. Because the Bible makes it clear that he is the creator. And the very creator is taken by his creatures. He allows them to do so. They treat him in an awful way. They reject him. And they nail him to a cross outside Jerusalem. How sad that is. They rejected him. And many today, they say to me, as I preach in the streets, and in the open air, you're wasting your time. Nobody's listening. What has he ever done for me? And they're doing exactly what they did outside Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. They are rejecting him. And their names are not in the book of life. And unless they repent and believe the gospel, they'll never be in the book of life. And the Bible says, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Friend, we believe these things are true. We're not preaching to scare you. We're preaching to warn you what the scripture says, that there is forgiveness. There is eternal life when we re realize that, that whosoever of guilt, we're guilty. And we need a saviour. And there is a saviour who gives eternal life to all who repent. There is forgiveness. There is mercy. There is grace. There is love. There is salvation. But what will you do with the Lord Jesus Christ? What will you do with this message? What will you do with what you hear? What will your response be to it? Well, we want to finish with just one more verse. 
in Romans 10 and verse 13. Romans 10 and verse 13. And this is a lovely verse to finish with. Romans 10 and verse 13. The whosoever of salvation. You know what it says, dear friends? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God keeps his word. God keeps his promise. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Today is God's day of salvation. Will you cry out for mercy? Will you turn to Christ? Will you see what he has done? And will you realize your guilt? And it's leading you to the lake of fire. Will you turn and turn to Christ to offer salvation? You know what he said in John chapter 10? I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, and that man there is really mankind, it's man, woman, boy or girl, if any man enter in, if anyone enter in, he shall be saved. We sing a chorus with the children, I am the door, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he should be saved, she should be saved. We shall be saved. I am the door. The words are but four. Millions are in, but there's room for more. Take one step inside, and thou shalt be saved. He is the door. People say, aren't there many doors to God? Aren't there many ways? This way, that way, the other way? No. There's only one way. There's only one saviour, but the Lord Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no other way. There is no other saviour. Would you take the whosoever of salvation? For whosoever, you dear friend, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. We trust that tonight might be a night of salvation for you. If you need any help, especially spiritual help, then please contact us. The Thursday Gospel Hall, Park Road, Hartley Pool, TS 26, 98 u 98 u And on our web address, what's in it? Number four, four me, not number, four me, dot all, dot UK. And also on Twitter, Bethesda Hall, and YouTube, Bethesda Gospel Hall. We trust that you might think of these whosoever's tonight, the whosoever of guilt, the whosoever of salvation, the whosoever of eternal life, the whosoever of condemnation, the whosoever of salvation. Be saved. Be saved today. Shall we pray? Father, we commit thy word today. We thank thee for such a wonderful Saviour as the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank thee for thy grace and mercy and salvation. Bless thy word, we pray. We pray that the Lord Jesus would be honoured and glorified. We ask it again in the Saviour's name. Amen. Thank you for listening. We continue. Two more nights, Wednesday and Thursday at half past seven. Thank you.